always like after doing a gospel reading like that to say the good news, the gospel of our Lord. You know, if you all those different things, you go, oh my gosh, doesn't sound so good today. Let's begin with with a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, as we uh, begin this message today and as we spend this time together, we ask, Lord, that you would open up your word to us, that your good news for us would be heard, and that we might share it with one another. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. Well, there were these two lovebirds who met online. Uh, it's, it's, very, it's getting to be a very common thing nowadays. They found that they were compatible. They scored 38 out of 40 categories of compatibility. It was love at first sight when they finally met in person. They were all mushy and goo-goo-eyed uh, with each other. They were inseparable. They spent every moment with each other. It was just the two of them and a wonderful world of love. Oh sure, they met the parents and they met each other's siblings. But it was a huge surprise to them, to both of them, just how big their family was. They were sitting at the bride and groom's table at the wedding, and they would look over and they'd say to each other, Who is that? And she would say, Well, that's my Uncle Ed and his wife Sylvia. Oh, and that's their four children. And she would say, I don't recognize half of the people here. And he would say, well, see those people sitting at the table there? They're my cousins from Iowa. That's my Aunt Mabel, too, over there, and my mom's relative, twice removed. So in love, you see, they were so in love that they only saw each other, that they didn't realize that they were married into a whole lot of family, a whole lot of relationships, some good and wonderful, some just downright crazy. Some delightful, some broken and hurting, some needy, but all family, just the same. Whether you want them or not, there they are when you get together. Family. And today, as we celebrate Mission Sunday, we want to make note that it is one big family that we belong to. Well, have you ever had one of those DNA tests? Have you ever done, uh, let's see here, I'm trying to remember, it's called the Ancestry.com or 23andMe. You send in a, a little bit sample and uh, they send you back and they tell you who you are related to. And they'll say, well, you're German or you're Swedish or you're Scandinavian or you're English. And by the way, I think absolutely everybody has a little Irish in them. Better where your family was from, or you might be from some other country uh, or area. Who are you related to in this family? What people are discovering is that their family is a lot bigger than they had first imagined it to be. They have people all around the world, like our young people who are so in love that they only saw each other and only spent time with each other. Our eyes are being opened up to, the, are being connected to a much larger family. And that, for us, is our brothers and sisters in Christ all around the world. We began this series with Welcome to the Family, and Jesus asked the questions in the Gospel. He said, Who is my mother and my brothers? And they, he answered the question by saying, Whoever does the will of God is my brother or my sister or my mother. So, so who is our family? Whoever does the will of God. That's our family. And what is the will of God? Well, the will of God, Jesus says in another section of Mark, is to love the Lord your God with all your heart and all your soul and all your mind and all your strength and to love your neighbors as yourselves. Our theme verse is from Romans 15, 7, where it says, Welcome one another, therefore, as Christ has welcomed you for the glory of God. We welcome each other because Christ first welcomed us into this family. And as we have uh, continued forward with our series, we've learned that sometimes in our families we have broken relationships. We have members of our family that don't talk to each other anymore. We have people who can't forget 
Uh, they keep pulling stuff out of a dumpster, was the illustration, when it should be thrown away and let go of. And we learn, too, that it is only through God's forgiveness and love for us in Jesus Christ that we are able to renew those relationships and have reconciliation within our family. We also learn that welcoming our family is including welcoming children into the heart of God's family. That Jesus himself took up a child in his arms and held that child, and in holding them, made an illustration to the disciples who were strong and says, in order to be part of this family, you have to be like this child. Innocent and humble, and most of all, Jesus says that you should be a servant of all. A servant of all. So Jesus picks up that child and he encourages all of us to be childlike in that, accepting God's love in Jesus and welcoming each other into the family. Today we finish up our series with these two thoughts. It's Mission Sunday, you see, and just how big is our family of God? Well, I got to thinking about this as I wanted to share it with you and I realized that I am guilty of judging others. Can you imagine? You're all going, oh, yeah. <laughs> well, we all are, I suppose, right? But we are all guilty of judging others in that way. And I think of it like this, is that even though we are brothers and sisters in faith with uh, other congregations <coughs> in Watertown area and beyond, I often don't think of them as partners or being a part of the family. They're just, they do their thing, we do our thing. But really, we are a part of the family. Even amongst Lutherans, you see. I mean, we just think of the alphabet soup of uh, denominations we have. We got uh, the W-E-L-S, right? Wisconsin Evangelical Lutheran Synod, Wisconsin folks. Uh, and we also have the ELCA. We also have the LCMS, that's the Missouri Synod folks. We have the ALC, which is an offshoot of that. And LCMC, that's us. And NALC, that's some other folks like that. And there's probably more. Even amongst the Lutheran family, there's quite a few uh, different branches of it. If you can imagine that wedding feast and uh, the bride, Je or Jesus is the groom at the table and the church is the bride, and he's looking at all the different tables of guests, and here they all are out there, right? Us as well. Protestants, Methodists, Presbyterians, Episcopals, e Freeze, Baptists, Advent, uh, Assemblies of God, Quakers, Moravians, you name it. There's all kinds of different parts of our family, Catholic and Orthodox as well. You know, every time we gather together for worship, we share the Apostles' Creed. We get to that one part where it says, right now at the end, it says, I believe in the Holy Christian Church. When we say that, we're not just saying, I believe in Peace Lutheran Lutheran Church, but we're saying that I believe that all Christian churches all around the world are united in at least one thing. One thing, and that is their belief that Christ is necessary for the salvation of Jesus' life and ministry. Death on the cross and resurrection is how that salvation comes to us. That one thing holds us together. We'll disagree with all kinds of other things and uh, hopefully have wonderful discussions and carry things on and love each other, even more about that. But that's the one church that, got, that they're talking about here. That is the one family that we are all part of. Now, I have to close up with this part of it because this is the really important part. This is the part when you heard the gospel reading and you all went, oh my goodness, all those things, it sounds horrible. But listen up here, so I'll give it to you again. If anyone causes one of these little ones, remember last week Jesus picked the child up and held the child and says, you must be like one of these in order to enter the kingdom of God, this child, his servant. Well, Jesus is still holding the child in his arms when he says this. If one, and if anyone causes one of these little ones, those who believe in me, okay, to stumble, it would be better for them to have a large millstone around their neck and be thrown into the sea. Yeah? <coughs> this is serious. This isn't just, well, we can pull these things off because they're not important. When we judge others, when we cause others to stumble, when we cause others to sin, there's a consequence to that sinfulness. When we don't forgive as we've been forgiven, when we don't welcome as we have been welcomed by Jesus himself, we cause them to stumble. And the consequence of that is horrible. Horrible. Fortunately for us today, God's grace extends to us beyond measure. 
It comes to us freely as a gift that's given. And in that, even when we do poorly as being a part of a family, Jesus renews and restores and reconciles that family unto himself through his sacrifice on the cross. We belong to that family. Well, we're going to share a few more things here uh, about all the mission work that we do here uh, at Peace, and it's more than we often realize. And so I invite you to stand as we sing uh, our song.